Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Today is Friday. Listen, everything I've shared with you this week, go get it. Listen, listen, listen again until the word of God soaks you in and begin to bear fruit. You begin to bear fruit from it. Praise God. So, before we go on to this broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? God is waiting to hear from you. So join me in faith now and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen to me. This message, don't keep it to yourself. Share it. With everyone you know. You'll be doing them so much good. Oh, Pastor, well, sometimes, you know, what if they don't? You see, the fact that the word of God has come to them. Give people the opportunity to reject or accept the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But you, make sure you are free from the blood of all men. And that's why I share with you from my heart. I don't hold back anything that I know will be profitable to you. As I receive it from the Lord, I don't say, oh, this one is for later revelation. No. There are still greater things yet to come. So why do we hurt the truth? So I give it to you free of charge. Enjoy it. And leave it. Leave it. I was talking to you this week about the work, we are his workmanship. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, we are his workmanship. We were created in Christ Jesus. I will share with you the, 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 this creation in Christ Jesus. And what is the purpose? What is the good works? And we narrowed it down to tighten. So I'll say, how, how, do you, how, how on earth were you able to connect these to tighten? It's by the Holy Spirit. You may sit down there and say, hey, I don't believe because I don't believe in time. You see, because someone lied to you, you know what happened to you? The serpent beat you. And that's what I'm here for. Jesus said, we shall take up serpent. That's what we're doing right now. Take out the serpent that are beating you. They told you Titan is wrong. They lied to you. They told you, now, they didn't just lie to you. They are wicked to you. They, they, it, now, some are plainly wicked. No matter the reason they give to you. They are walking in iniquity. Anyone who tells you not to tithe, he's a worker of iniquity. Yeah. And, and he's, he's flowing by the spirit of the Antichrist. Because tithing is a covenant. A covenant is a covenant. You don't annul covenants. You only strengthen them. And that's the reason I, you know, when, when people come, oh, Old Testament, New Testament, I always say this to them. I say, be careful. Be careful because everything we read in the scriptures is for our learning. But the truth is, what are you learning from it? I give this example. God had a covenant with Noah. And that covenant, the token of that covenant was the rainbow. See? Noah brought animals and things are sacrificed unto the Lord. God said to Noah, I'm cutting a covenant with you because I've accepted what you have given me. So now here is my own part of the covenant. What is it? Anytime I cause a cloud to move on the earth, the bow will appear. And when I see the bow, I will remember today and I will withdraw from destroying the earth with flood. Now, according to you who believe in New and Old Testament, right? You would say the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus is a greater sacrifice than any other sacrifice anyone could have ever done or will ever do. I agree with you. But the God who accepts the sacrifice and the God who made the covenant with Noah the rainbow is not in any man's hand. The rainbow is not a phenomenon, a phenomenon that a man controls. It's something that God himself controls. Till this day, when the, when the cloud gathers, 
the rainbow comes up. And you think God have not seen that rainbow to say that mm, this covenant is actually expired because there's a better covenant with Christ. So there's no need for the rainbow. Michael, Gabriel, you guys uh, shut down that rainbow thing. It's no more needed again. Lest my people be led astray. But till this day, some of you will see the rainbow today. What do you think of that? God himself that made that covenant with Noah still enjoys seeing the rainbow. Even though Christ have died. What does that tell you? Covenants are not annulled. Covenants are not destroyed. Covenants are strengthened. They are strengthened. Why? God is not foolish. He's an eternal God. So any instruction God gives to you, he thinks eternally. Because that covenant itself will be a testimony for generations to come. That's why you keep it. It's the same thing with tithing. You people have this mentality, oh, by tithing, the church wants to collect your money. They are using it to collect your money. Listen to me, the fact that people have taken advantage of a truth to their own benefit doesn't negate the truth. See, as we go on in life, the truth concerning that thing will come. And the moment, the truth, what did Jesus say? If you continue in my word, this is if you stop my word. It is if you stop following the covenant. You, he said, if you continue in my word, so there is a continuing, then you will be my disciple indeed. So there is the process of becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's not that I'm happy I'm saved, so I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. No, sir. There is the continuing. And when you're continuing, there are things that will force you to stop. Don't you know that? But if you continue with him, continue. So you, you, you find out that Christians tight. Okay, so you continue. You don't stop it. You continue. Even though you don't understand it yet, you continue in his word. Then you show that you're a disciple because you don't joke with tights. Then what did Jesus say? Then you will know the truth. Which truth? About Titan. And the truth will bring you liberty. So if a church, if a pastor have bondaged you, you know, have put you in bondage where Titan is concerned, it's not a problem. Continue faithfully. Continue. Truth will meet you. And when truth comes, ah, wow, they didn't tell me half of this story. Ah, with joy, you begin to walk in the truth. And nobody can hold you. No, hey, hey, come here. No, no, no. You can hold me because I've been made free. Praise God. Because now I understand. Oh, wow. I see now. So you see, God instituted Titan, not because of the church. God instituted Titan because he was looking at all the families of the earth, wherever they are, in India, in China, in Kosovo, in, in Mauritania, in, in that little tiny village. He's concerned about taking care of them. And how is he going to take care of them? If you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed. So God looks at a nation. Like, like Mozambique. He looks at a nation like New Zealand. And he said, oh, these people, my blessing have not come to them yet. So what is he going to do? I need to, I need to. Christ needs to get there. Get there. And, and that's why I told you, Christ is not the fulfillment of the blessing. Christ is the door to the fulfillment of the blessing. So we, if you stop at Christ, you have not fulfilled the blessing. So he looks at that nation, he looks at that community, he looks at that village. No one, Christ is not there yet. And because Christ is not there yet, no one is going to receive the information to bring about the blessing. So what does God do? He sends Christ there. How? If, if, if someone receives a revelation, that's why you read Paul who, who will be praying in the night and he receives a vision. Come over to Macedonia and help us. And then he gets over to Macedonia. What's he doing? He's teaching, he's teaching, he's preaching. What is the message? God wants to bless you, your family. He wants to bless all the families of the earth. That's the message of the gospel. God wants to bless the families of the earth through you. So we take this gospel everywhere. And then we get there. And we begin to prosper in God. 
and God begins to give us things. And as he gives us things, we take out the tithe and we go before him. So why, why, why? Say, listen, you don't understand. It's a covenant, number one. Number two is a point of contact. It's a point of contact. And number three, it is the seed for the blessing of the earth. Whenever we tithe our prayer, and this is the intercession we do. Father, as I obey you, bless every family of the earth. So as he's doing it through you, he's doing it through every other person that is in Christ. Now you see why they are wicked who oppose the prosperity gospel. Because it's the truth. If today, the, my capacity today is 100,000, my tithe will be 10,000. Now so even if it's only tithe I do in obedience to God, my capacity is 10,000. But you see, if God increases my capacity to 1 million, my capacity of tithing becomes 100,000. If God increases my capacity to 10 million, my tithing capacity increases to 1 million. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when we bring our tithe before the Lord, we trust God for prosperity. And what's that prosperity? Increase my capacity, Lord. God is not afraid of you becoming wealthy. He is not. And that's why he has already put the checks and balance. See, he says, you shall remember the Lord your God. How do you remember the Lord your God? You tithe. So every time you receive money, you take out the tithe first. Because it's, it's a mark of honor unto the Lord. You do it first. And I told you, you don't tithe to be blessed. You tithe because you are blessed. So when people teach all those things, hey, if you don't tithe, God will not bless you. Where did they get that? That's what they're arguing about. Where did they get it from? Abraham had received all the good things. He had them. Then God says, give me one tenth of it. Jacob said before the Lord, if you will bless me. He didn't bring an offering first. If you will bless me and help me. Then this place shall be and everything you give me, I will bring a tithe, a tent. Everything you give, because his father and grandfather have taught him we tithe from everything. He learned it from them. And as Abraham preserved righteousness, he was teaching his children and his household. And you come here and say, Titan, we should, we should neglect Titan. Huh? You're doing damage to generations unborn. You're doing damage to them. You take out, take out Titan, the generations coming will suffer for it. And they, they were all upon all our time. You don't know that many nations are enjoying today, even in their sinful nature, because of the Titan of their parents. So I say, how come eh, we, eh, we, 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 we Christians, we tight yet, we're not the richest, the richest men in the world. You don't count richest men in the world as blessed men. No, you don't. That's so ignorant. It's so ignorant. If you want to know a blessed man, now this is what the Lord taught me many years ago. He said, the Lord said to me, if you want to know a blessed man, wait till the third generation of that man. Because the blessing of God, this is the principle of God. The blessing of God is confirmed in the third generation. So you can't look at a man today and call him blessed. Look at the blessing. Look at the wealth that have spanned through three generations. And look at what happened in the third generation. If, this, if the wealth that spanned from the grandfather, father, and then their children, if you see an establishment of that wealth, then the hand of the Lord is upon that blessing. Check it, you will find titan inside. Whether they are Christians or they are Muslim, check out the, the wealthiest families on earth. Listen to me. Check out the wealthiest families on earth, not individuals, not companies. Wealthiest families that have sustained their wealth for three generations and they are doing well. Check them out. You will find Titan in them. Whether Christians or Muslims. Because you don't realize that Abraham taught Ishmael Titan. Ishmael tithed. Yes, because his father taught him. These are things people don't know. So, so they argue blindly. Jesus said you err because you don't know the scripture, nor the power of God. So you err. You make mistakes in your arguments. 
So the tithe belongs to God. That is how God ordained it. So we give it to the Lord. The tithe does not belong to the church. The church can be a beneficiary of the tithe, but it does not belong to them. So say, oh, you tithe where you are fed. Who feeds you? God never ordained that a church feeds you. No. What did he say? Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Not the church, eh? but the pastor speak. No. The pastor's job is to get you to receive words from the mouth of God. That's what the pastor is supposed to do for you. So you begin to receive words from him. So the pastor's job, every pastor's job is to teach you how to fellowship with the Lord. Until you begin to receive words from the mouth of God yourself. And that's what will sustain the church. Because people are not growing. People, are not, are not, uh, people don't have encounters and experience. People have not experienced the Lord for themselves. So when a pastor goes wrong, everybody goes wrong. But when we have people who are connected to the Lord, someone will receive a word from the Lord and say, your pastor is going into error. Pray for him. And our Lord, how is he going to see this thing he's beginning to do? Oh, Lord, I'm close to my pastor. I'll speak to him. Say, pastor, I was praying last night. The Lord spoke to me concerning something. And I think I should share it with you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Ah, I didn't know. Thank you so much. Even the one who's stubborn, he has heard the word of the Lord too. Why? Because you are in touch with the same God that he's in touch with. But if the pastor is the only voice that people hear, of God people hear, I bet you error is waiting to happen. Error in actions waiting to happen. Error in teachings waiting to happen. Every teacher of the word is to introduce. That's what I do on this broadcast. Get you to receive from the mouth of God. So when we say you tight where you are fed, yes, you tight where, do you, where are you fed from? The mouth of God. So you wait for an instruction from the mouth of God to you concerning the tithe, his money. So you say, Lord, what do I do with it? He will speak to you. He will speak to you. you say, but, but what if I don't hear God speak to me? Then are you a child of God? If you are a child of God, Jesus and my sheep will hear my voice. So that shouldn't be a factor. You shouldn't be saying, what if I don't hear God? No, no. If you really don't hear God, then we question your sonship or, or your, your identity as a child of God. We question it. But when you bring that tithe before the Lord, I say, Lord, you have blessed me. He says, son, take that money and give it to so so and so person. Take that money and give it to that church. A dear friend of mine shared with me how her dad, walking by the same principle, he was driving his car. See, God had blessed him. And he was driving his car, and he was carrying his title. I don't know if it was by check or cash. I can't remember now. But say so he was driving. And then he was just driving by this church. The church was off the road, but he was on the highway. And the word of the Lord came to him. He said, that tithe you have, go give it to that church. He didn't know the church, he didn't know the pastor, but he knew he had heard the voice of God. And then he went to, the, he turned around, went, visited, and he decided to worship with them. So during the offering time, he gave the money. Can't remember, but I think he had an interaction with the pastor. He says, I was just driving and God said I should. And the pastor began to rejoice. What's the matter, sir? Do you know this is the money we've been asking God for, for the roofing of our new sanctuary? Wow. Wow. So really I heard from God. Yes, you heard from God. Guess what? Guess what? You see, that man that day did the good work that God preordained. Now you see, the, the roofing of the church was there. The prayer of the saints were going up before the Lord. This man had received money and the tithe of the money will roof that church. And the voice of the Lord came to him and he went, he did the good work. Now that church celebrated. Why? They didn't have to put anyone under pressure. So the reason people are put under pressure in church is because they don't tithe right. God's children don't tithe right. I always say this to people and it's the truth. The day 
God's children learn and begin to tithe properly by the voice of God, it's going to reduce crime rates to the minimum. Yes. Because that's when you find out that God can send you to give your tithes to someone who have just decided that he's going to join a robbery gang by tomorrow if he doesn't get the 10,000 naira he's looking for. How do you think terrorists recruit people? They promise them food and money. Why do you think they agree? Because they lack food and money. So imagine that one who's been convinced, come and join us, come and join And suddenly you walk up to that person and say, God, I was praying last night and God said I should come and give you this. And what is this? The money to pay for, for, her, for his school fees. And then he said, he said, God said, yeah, God sent me. Wow. So God knows me. Yes, he knows you. Wow. So God knows where I have, that I have me. Yes, he knows. I bet you that fellow will not go join evil people. Because he now feels God is, God's eyes are following him. You see how we bring righteousness on the earth? But we, had, we don't know. We have not practiced this. In the in, 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 in book of Psalms, it says they know not. They don't understand. So they walk on in darkness. And all the foundation of the world is out of course. But I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. Why are we children of the Most High? To extend the frontiers of his blessing. He said, through you. All the families of the earth will be blessed. Join this army. Join this army of fulfilling God's word and fulfilling God's blessing. Join us. We're forming an army and we'll take out poverty from the earth. We'll take by obedience to God. We'll take out wickedness from the earth by obedience to God. And we'll see the word of God being magnified on the earth. Praise God. Glory to God. I pray that the hand of the Lord will rest upon you continually and feed you, nourish you, and take care of you. In Jesus' name. Were you blessed? Have a wonderful weekend. The best you have ever experienced. God bless you. Bye.